Is there anything here I can scan? I don't think so. Alright, the chunk it is. Tons of things to do in here. Oh man, look. All over the place. Hey guys, I need to apologize to you guys again for that last video skip. Uh, it turns out that while I was uh, in the middle of my Let's Play, I got a random phone call from a very, very close friend of mine from way back when, uh, from, from many, many years ago. Uh, we actually had ended up losing touch over the last six years or so. And, you know, when I was about to get onto Tachanka, um, he called and just right out of the blue. And, you know, so we, we chatted for a bit and reconnected. And in the middle of our conversation, I found out from him that he apparently has been diagnosed with brain cancer. So, needless to say, I ended up not really being able to obviously play any more Mass Effect 3 that evening because I, I needed to, um, you know, I needed to, to, to catch up with him and talk to him. And so we had a really nice, uh, deep, involved three hour conversation. It was good, it was really great to reconnect with him. And I guess it just really got me thinking about how important it is to, you know, be able to tell people and and recognize how much they mean to you, how much you care about them. I've, I've always been a very big advocate of, of trying to take the time to do that. And, you know, I think in this day and age, it's it's so much easier to keep in touch with people. It's so much easier to, to reach out and reconnect with people. Because, I, I mean, we back in the day, we didn't have things like Facebook, Instant Messenger, Gchat, Skype, what have you. Like, it was so much harder 10 years ago to, you know, to, to, to stay in touch with people and to, um, to, tell, to let them know that you know that you're thinking about them, or that, or just simply letting them know how much you appreciate your friendship with them. Um, so I feel like nowadays we have far less excuse to to not do that. Um, and uh, you know, I just I just wanted to to just address that because it's something that definitely has been on my mind for a while. Um, to try to do the best that you can, I'm sure I am, to, you know, let those people know how much they, important they are, how important they are to you and how much they've impacted your life while they're still around. You know, life is short. And, um, you know, I, I didn't mean to get into a, into a tangent there, but, you know, I just, it was just something that I, I needed to get off my chest uh, after talking with, with my very good friend. Um, the other so right now, I'm actually recording two days later. Uh, the reason why I wasn't able to get back into this last night, because I definitely was trying to get back into it last night, um, to not leave this session hanging, was because I ended up discovering uh, a good 30 minute chunk of my footage from one of my previous recordings was corrupted. Uh, you might have already seen what ended up happening to that footage. Um, I, I believe it's episode 21, which at the filming of this particular session, I refer to it as the Mass Effect Picture Show. So I hope that you guys ended up being mildly amused by my feeble attempts at trying to creatively, you know, salvage what I had um, with, with the corrupted film. Um, but anyway, that's that's an explanation of, of of that. So, anyway, again, I'm sorry about the the, the tangent here, folks. But um, yeah, so let's go ahead and get back to what we were doing. Um, Tuchanka, scarred by bombardment, craters, radioactive rubble, 
choking ash, salt flats, and alkaline seas, Tachanka can barely support life. Thousands of years ago, life grew in fierce abundance under the F-class star Aralak, a Reich clan word meaning Eye of Wrath. Tree anal analogs grew in thick jungles, their roots growing out of shallow, silty seas. Life fed upon life in an evolutionary crucible. This world died in nuclear firestorms after the Krogan split the atom. A little ice age of nuclear winter killed off much of the remaining plant life. In recent centuries, many Krogan have returned to their homeworld. The reduced albedo has caused global temperatures to rise. In order to maintain livable temperatures, a vast, proud, uh, a vast shroud was assembled at the L1 Lagrange point. It is maintained by the Council Demilitarization Enforcement Mission, or the CDEM, which is based on orbiting battle stations. CDEM Advisory. Visitors to Tachanka land at their own risk. The CDEM will not attempt to extract citizens threatened by clan warfare. Travel Advisory. The ecology of, Tuch of Tuchanka is deadly. Nearly every native species engages in some predatory behavior. Even the remaining vegetation is carnivorous. Travel beyond guarded areas is strongly discouraged. Wow. What a place Tuchanka is. Alright, so... I guess I just selected a place where we're gonna go. I don't, re don't recall what we just did, but... Anyway, I just pressed a button, so... I have not... I haven't brought Garrus or Liara with me in a while. I'm gonna pair them up with Edie. I think I'm gonna bring Gar Garrus with me for this for this mission. Whatever this mission I just selected. <laughs> I accidentally selected. Um, Alright, so I'm still holding two weapons, that's fine. Do I want to change Garrus's weapon? I think I'm actually pretty happy with what he has. Um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with what he has. And... Wow, Garrus. I definitely haven't been using Garrus a lot, apparently. Sorry, Garrus, I didn't mean to ignore you. Let's see what we can do with Overload. Additional targets or increase... Yeah, I want to increase the damage. Um, mum, 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 mum. Armor piercing... Eh. Proxenia mine is okay. I I tend to use concuc concussive shot a decent amount, so I'm at least going to level it up to rank 3. Okay. Shepard Services landing forces away from the Tachunka battlefields. Their target seems to be an ancient ground-to-space cannon facility that hasn't been used since the Krogan Rebellions. The site has no obvious military advantage, and the Krogan are spread too thin to deal with it. Do we know what Cerberus is up to? No, but we do know that Cerberus doesn't act without a plan. Get in there and stop them. Find out what they're up to while you're at it. We'll get it done. See to it. Hack it out. Hack it out. Yeah. Looks like Cerberus got that cannon operational, Commander. Thank you, Steve. Get on it. All right. Let's find the control room for those cannons. Kill anything in our way. Sounds simple enough. Sounds good to me, Shep. Let's see. Uh... Can I sneak? I don't know what the control is to sneak, guys. Might as well try to go for a headshot if I can. If I would stop shaking. Stop shaking, Shep. Commander, I have a visual on an inbound service cruiser. The cannon fire is clearing the way. Can't believe that didn't actually kill him. Oh well. If that ship makes it to the bombardment range, the Krogan resistance is in trouble. Keep track of it. On it. Uh oh. Are there people behind us? Great. Gotta get out, gotta get out of here, gotta get out of here. You guys, they're over here.
I hear turrets, maybe. Get over here. Stop doing that. Woo! Feels so good. Hopefully, this second half of the position is not gonna be utter fail like it was in the previous half. Come on, Edie, I need you to get your... I need your overload recharged. I think it's time to test this cannon. So far, so good. Good stuff, Garrus and Edie. You guys, awesome. Awesome as usual. Um, was there anything back here? There's something down there. Junk salvage. Wow, that's pretty expensive junk. If it was thirty thousand, if it's three thousand credits, especially, I'm I'm equally impressed that Shepard was able to um, appraise that, determine that it was three thousand credits. All right, there's Edie. They're like, come on, let's get to the cannon. Shep, what are you doing? I'm, you know, just... Wow. There's some rovers here. And some ammo. I think I see something else. I thought I saw something else I could click. Maybe not. up here. Do, 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 do. Oh wait, is this the cannon? Is this the cannon room? Probably. I'm assuming. No, it's not. It's it's another side room, which has more ammo and Armax Arsenal gauntlets. Very nice, very nice. Okay, now we're back to the cannon area. Pick up a med kit. Priority, chef. Priorities. This is pretty interesting. 
interesting. Um, old grid schematics. Not the kind of Krogan relic I expected to find. Oh yeah, that's right, we're on the Chanka. Control console, activate. They cut power to the console! You need to get the power back on! Let's move. Alright, fair They're enough. And reinforcements, fortifying their position. Edie is sounding a lot more... The, do I sense panic in Edie's voice? She doesn't sound very robotic right now, that's kind of weird.
and I like the uniqueness of the biotic powers and the tech powers, so um, I tend to explore those more. And there's just tons and tons of LPs I've noticed through all the Mass Effects of people just playing a soldier, which there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, a lot of people love the soldiers, and I think you can argue that a soldier tends to be one of the easier games, the easier classes to play with. Um, but you know, I like to be different. I like to be diverse. A lot of people also are satisfied with the default shepherd. And I think part of that is because it's just so hard to make a custom shepherd look decent that they just settle for, you know, the regular John or Jane Shepherd. But, um, you know, and there's nothing wrong with, with staying with the default. But I don't know. I like, I like to feel like my characters in games like this are my own. Um, and are unique and different from anybody else's. Sorry I'm so chatty, I just feel like, you know, while we're... If I'm just spending time taking down all these Cerberi... Cerberi... I might as well, um... Uh... Give some random commentaries. Hold on, add it. Stop rolling around! Okay. Up. I didn't know that. Okay. Are there any more any more Cerberi? Speaking of um speaking of which, where is our what's going on with our cannon? Oh, I need to find the power. Um Yeah. Think Understood. Shepherd, think. Got it. They are no, come I'm this on. Way, guys. Right. They are here. Uh, the things that I was supposed to sh I'm supposed to shoot them, really? Oh. Very well. Shoot the latch. Ah, to open them. Makes sense. Yay! I know how to activate a module for 150 XP. I feel like it's overkill using this gun to blast open a module, but that's okay. I've rerouted the power to the main console. Level. Heading back now. No, no open fire. Hold on, should I? Let's see if I can level. Ooh, seven points. I want to max out to warp. Increase damage to barriers and armor by 50%. Weaken armor targets by an additional 25%. Increase recharge speed by 35%. Um, I like the more damage. I like the more damage. Go with that. And I think with Edie, I will increase her incinerate, because incinerate's actually pretty awesome. And last but not least, Garrus. Garrus, where are you? I'm gonna save his points, because he only has two. We got this. Oh, shield guardian people. Alright, well, let's take the shield. And. Last you. Here, take an, take an incinerate while you're at it.
combat engineer? I don't think so. Take that, combat engineer. You're going down. No way I'm gonna let you make any more turrets, because I can't stand... Can't stand turrets! Control restored. Targeting enabled. Coordinates, Lieutenant. Uploaded. Firing. Wait, I want to see what's firing. Direct starboard hit, Commander. Target breaking up. Repeat. Direct hit. That's a beautiful sight. All right. Good work, everyone. Why am I looking in this direction? Shepard, with those Krogan cannons operational, Cerberus has actually given us the advantage in that system. The enemy's pulling back, but we think they'll try to seize the facility again. Seems likely. I'm sending an Alliance team to keep it secure. They've got a foothold in a strong defensive position, thanks to you. No Glad to hear it. Good work, Commander. Hack it out. Hack it out. <laughs> 